Hey guys, thank you for joining me for another online yoga video. Today's class is going to be all about getting comfortable. So as the weather begins to change, it begins to get a bit cooler, we may find that we begin to not only move less, but our bodies become a little bit tighter within the cooler months. So today we're going to be practicing with doing a, a, a short and sweet warm up, and then we're going to be focusing on deep stretching all these areas that can get quite tight and practicing with keeping that mobility nice and agile through the cooler months. So I recommend here that you move into a place where you can feel comfortable, maybe turn up the heating, get into some nice warm socks. Um, also, if you find that your normal warm-up practice doesn't actually warm you up, you may want to include some more heating movements into your practice. We want to make sure that our bodies are nice and warm before we deep stretch. I've got a couple of blocks and a yoga strap to help support me in this practice. I recommend you get the same. If not, then books or pillows will do just as well. I really hope you enjoy this practice. Thank you so much for joining me. Namaste. Okay guys, so just gonna come into a comfortable seated position. Um, as you can see, I have a couple of blocks and a strap ready for me later on in the class when we're spending more time on the floor. If you wanted to sit up on your blocks, make yourself nice and tall through the spine, you can do that. Try to ground down through the sit bones. Try to make the knee, put the hips into a comfortable position. So if it feels uncomfortable with the knees out to the side, you can just extend your legs out in front or sit on your shins instead. But focus really on rooting down through each point of connection your body has, and then focus on this expansion, this lift through the spine, all the way up to the crown of the head. The shoulders drop down away from the ears. Chest stays nice and open. If you wanted, you can take Gyan Mudra, connecting the index finger and the thumb. The remaining three fingers stretched out in front with the palms facing up. Softly close the eyes. Beginning to connect to your Ujjayi Pranayama, your yoga breath, breathing in and out through the nose. And focus here on drawing the low belly in. So activating Uddiyana Bandha, your low belly draws in and up towards the rib cage. This helps you breathe deeper into the lungs. You should feel it as your low belly draws in, you have that support for your lower back and it allows you to breathe deeper, more expansive, not only outwards, but also upwards through the lungs. Allow the shoulder blades to melt down the back every time you exhale. Allow the chest to rise every time you inhale. And now is also a wonderful opportunity if you would like to set yourself an intention for the practice. It can be a word, a mantra you'd like to take into it, a goal or an ambition. Anything you'd like to receive from your practice today, anything you'd like to incorporate into your life. Or also anything you'd like to cleanse from yourself, anything you'd like to be rid of for the rest of your day, week, anything that no longer serves you. You let that go now. Take one more deep breath in. Exhale, let it go. Bring the palms together at the heart center, softly blinking the eyes open. Namaste. Okay, so we are gonna be trying to get into some more deeper stretching postures, but we are gonna take a warm up just to make sure we've moved the muscle groups, moved the joint groups, especially if it's cold, make sure that you're taking extra care here to move the body a little bit more. So coming into your seated position, bring your right hand to the outside of the right hip. As we inhale, extend up through those left fingertips. As we exhale, side bend over to the right. So focus on grounding through the sit bones, allowing the hips to open up. Focus on drawing the chest up towards the ceiling and externally rotating that left arm. So nice and open through the shoulders, through the chest. The left shoulder draws down and away from the ear. Spin the little finger down towards the earth. Only look up if it's comfortable on your neck. Inhale, come up through center, reach up. Exhale, left hand to the outside of the left hip. Inhale to reach through those right fingertips. Exhale, side bend over to the left. Again, creating space along the chest, opening up through the collarbone. Continue to draw those shoulder blades together behind you. External rotation in that right shoulder. Look up only if it feels comfortable. And maybe over time you can come down onto the elbow, but ensure that you're still lengthening through the right side body. 
you're not collapsing through that right shoulder, not into a forward fold as such, but more of a side bend opening up through the right side. Inhale, come up through center, reach up. Exhale, right hand to the outside of the right hip, left hand towards the right knee. On our inhale, low belly draws in, expand through the crown of the head, lifting the chest. And as we exhale, we twist trying to keep the pelvis nice and level. Unless you're working with any SI joint pain or lower back injuries, make sure your hips don't move in twists. If you have low back pain, allow your hips to move so you're taking the strain out of the lower back. But ultimately, we want the twist to be coming from the rib cage. Inhale, come through center, reach up. Exhale, left hand to the outside of the left hip, right hand towards the left knee. Inhale, crown of the head reaches. And exhale to twist. Tuning into how you're feeling here, begin to connect the shoulder blades together behind you as we open through the collarbone, the front side of the chest. So you can use a little bit of the strength of the arms to help you go deeper, but ultimately if you were to let go of the leg, you should remain in the same position. You should be using the core work to help you get a little bit deeper into your twist. Inhale to come up through center, reach up, extend. And exhale to release down. We'll come into our tabletop position so on our hands and knees. Wrists underneath shoulders, knees underneath hips, feet flat out behind you. And today we're actually going to take some swooping cat-cow position. So if you prefer the traditional cat-cow, you can take that. I quite like the swooping cat-cow just opens up through a little bit more dimensions of the body. So what you're actually going to do is just um, either bring the palms of the hands forward slightly or bring the knees back. And as we exhale, we come into almost an extended child's pose, but bring the right hip to the right foot, then swirl it round, bring the left hip to the left foot, and then come round to the front, maybe come into a high cobra opening through the front side of the body and then repeat the movement right hip to right foot to left foot all the way around opening up through the chest feeling the mobility in the shoulders rounding the back as we come into a child's pose our extended child's pose and keep moving finding any movements that feel good to you and then when you're ready switch directions opening up through the shoulders maybe dropping into the hips Listening to how your body feels, how the outer edges of the thighs. And just notice any places where you feel tension. Become aware of them without forcing movement so that when we move into slightly deeper stretches, you're not forcing, you're already aware of any tightness. And then when you're ready, come back to a neutral position. So fingers just, in, sorry, uh, palms of the hands just in front of the shoulders, tuck the toes under, lift those sit bones up and back behind you. We're coming to our first downward facing dog. You want either, well, I say you want the index finger or the middle finger to be facing the short edge of the mat. But what we're really going for is the wrist creases to be facing the short edge of the mat. Elbow creases are towards facing towards the ceiling. Shoulders draw down the back and away from the ears as we open up through the front side of the body, nice and open through the front of the neck. No strain as the neck, hang, sorry, the head hangs heavy. Keep that low belly drawn in as we extend through the spine, lifting those sit bones nice and high. And then if there's space, you can pretend, uh, so, excuse me, you can begin to pedal out the heels. Pedal out the heels is what I was gonna say. <laughs> you can pedal out the heels one at a time, or maybe begin to stretch the heels back behind you, opening up through the backs of the legs. But make sure your primary focus is on the length of the spine. And then on your next breath in, look forward to the space between the hands. In as many steps as you need, you can walk forward. We're going to come into a rag doll. So feet hips distance apart, maybe a bit wider. Keep the knees bent. Take opposite hand to opposite elbow as you bring soft movements into the body. Maybe beginning to bend and straighten one leg at a time. And then when you're ready, release the hold of the elbows, staying bent through the knees, rooted through the feet, begin to roll up the spine. Very gently, as slowly as you'd like, come all the way back up to standing. Into our Samastitihi mountain pose. 
So come into at the front of the mat, big toes touching with a little bit of space between the heels, or you can bring your feet to hips distance apart, flat edges of the feet parallel with the flat edges of the mat. Arms alongside the body, palms face forward, quadriceps softly active, tailbone draws down towards the earth as you draw that low belly in, continuing to breathe deep into the rib cage, into the chest, shoulders draw up and away from the ears, looking forward. So we're going to come into three rounds of three namaskar A. We're going to take a couple of standing postures and then we're going to come straight into our seated sequence working with opening up through the areas where we've accumulated a lot of tightness. So as we inhale, bring the arms up overhead, keep the shoulders away from the ears, palms face each other, look forward. Exhale, soft bend in the knees as we hinge forward from the hips, hands to thighs, shins or towards the earth. As we inhale, begin to lengthen the spine, draw the palms up the legs. If the legs are straight, keep the hips over the heels and look forward. As we exhale, bend the knees as much as you need to, to plant the hands, stepping into a high plank. So knees can be lifted or lowered here. And then as we exhale, keep the elbows drawn into the ribs, slowly and with control, lower down onto your belly. Tops of the feet come flat. Inhale, elbows continue to draw in as we lift the chest. Shoulders draw away, avoid squeezing the glutes. Allow the strength to come from the muscles along the spine. Exhale, forehead releases down using the strength of the arms, pressing into a tabletop tuck, the toes under, downward facing dog. Again, knees can be bent or you can begin to open up through the backs of the legs. Just holding for a couple of moments, continuing to draw that low belly in. Try to get your inhales to match the exhales. Inhale, look forward to the space between the hands. In as many steps as you need, walk forward to that halfway lift. As we exhale, soft bend in the knees, we bring the crown of the head towards the earth. As we inhale, trying to come up with a straight spine, keep the low belly in, your knees can be as bent as they need to be all the way up. And exhale to release back to Samasthiti at the front of the mat. Second round, inhale, arms up overhead, this time, maybe bring palms together, look towards thumbs, continue to draw the shoulder blades down. Exhale, hinge forward from the hips. Maybe the hands come down towards the floor. Inhale, lengthen the spine, lift the chest and look forward. Exhale, you can step, or if it's in your practice, float back through Chaturanga. So lower halfway, okay? Inhaling. You can either flip the feet or roll over the toes, upward facing dog. Arms towards straight. Remember the neck is the extension of the spine. As we exhale, roll over the feet or flip the toes. Downward facing dog, steady your breath. Inhale. Look forward to the space between the hands. Step or if it's in your practice, you can float forward, bending the knees, hips nice and high. As we land lightly at the front of the mat, coming into the halfway lift, lengthen and look forward. Exhale, crown of the head releases down, chin towards the shins. Inhale, come all the way up, straight back. Maybe look up, low belly in, tailbone down. And exhale. Samastiti, last round, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Holding for just a moment. Remember, you can always drop to the knees, come into a child's pose if downward facing dog feels too much. And then when you're ready, inhale, look forward to the space between the hands, step or float. Coming into the halfway lift. Exhale, chin to shin, crown of the head releases towards the earth. Inhale, come all the way up, lengthen, low belly in, tailbone down. 
and exhale to release into Samastidhi. So we're just going to take a triangle and a warrior and then we're going to come into our seated position. So as we inhale, step the right foot back about three feet, arms out to shoulder height, right toes face the short edge of the mat, left toes in about 45 degrees, heel to arch alignment. So as we inhale, we focus on lengthening the spine, lift the chest, lengthen the crown of the head away from the tailbone. And as we exhale, we side bend. So avoid forward folding, but actually reach those right fingertips as far right as you can. And then release that right hand down to the thigh, the shin, the earth. Or if you have your block, you can place it down to a block. Or maybe hook your peace fingers around the big toes. You can look down towards the earth or your big toe, or you can look up towards that top thumb only if it feels comfortable in the neck. This is just to help open up through the backs of the legs, opening up through the inner thighs, getting that external and an internal rotation of the hip joint. Inhale, look down, soft bend in the right knee to press up right toes in left toes out exhale fully inhale crown of the head reaches away draw the shoulders down away from the ears exhale reach forward with those left fingertips and then bring the left hand to thigh shin floor block or maybe the big toe and again only look up if it feels comfortable in the neck feeling that stretch along the right side of the body continue to lengthen through the left side of the body as well try to avoid collapsing or rounding as we draw that right hip back and in line with the left feel a slight internal rotation of the right hip and the external rotation and the abduction of the left hip this is just going to help us create that openness, that space when we move slightly deeper into our seated sequence. Inhale, look down, press up. Left toes in, right toes out. We're going to move into a warrior two. So you may need to widen the feet here a little bit. What we're going to do is we're going to stack our right knee over our right ankle. So make sure you bring your feet as wide as you need to do that. Arms out to shoulder height, look to the middle finger of the right hand. Back foot's at 45 degrees, working again with that external rotation of the hip joint. Pelvis aiming to be squared to the long edge of the mat, chest out to the side, only gaze looking out to the middle finger of the right hand. Continue to draw the shoulders down and away from the ears. Inhale to come up through center, right toes in, left toes out, exhale. Left knee over left ankle, Try to keep the shoulders stacked over the hips. Look to the middle finger of the left hand. Shoulders draw down away from the ears, pressing through the outer edge of the right foot. Nice and grounded, strong through that left leg as the hips sink nice and low. Inhale, come up. As we exhale, we pinwheel the arms to either side of the left foot. Inhale to plank. Exhale, chaturanga or lower down onto your belly. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Okay, we're gonna come through to a seat. So you can either drop to the shins or cross your legs and sit through. Hopefully we're feeling warmed up now. If you're not, make sure you do get to a point where you're feeling warm by taking some more movements or cranking up your heating because we're going to begin to stretch. So we're going to start with Dandasana, moving into Paschimottanasana. So just make sure you're nice and grounded through your sit bones. Press the palms to the outsides of the hips to lengthen the spine. Bring the chin towards the chest slightly and bring the ears back in line with the shoulders. Activating Jalandhara Bandha, the throat lock toes flexed back towards you. So if you're here and you find you can't straighten your legs without rounding your back, then just simply bring a little bend to the knees. If that feels uncomfortable, you can also place a block under the knees for support. But either way, we're looking to feel a stretch in the backs of the legs. If you wanted to take it a little bit further, 
then you can begin to fold forward. So if you're working with lower back injuries, I recommend here that you bring the palms behind you and either tent the fingers or press into the hands and just lift the chest forward slightly. This takes some of the pressure out of the lower back. If you wanted to take it forward and you have no issues, then the first option is to take the strap around the feet and work with lifting the chest. So what the benefit of this does is as we bend the elbows towards the earth, we're using a little bit of a strength of the arms, but also we're focusing on lifting the chest. As you can see, the shoulders draw down away from the ears. What you don't want to be doing is this, where the back collapses, you're rounding through the back and you're really using the arms to lurch yourself forward instead, elbows down, chest through. Okay, so chest leaves the moment, leaves the move, leads the movement, sorry. Imagine that you're trying to stick your butt out the back, you're trying to reach those sit bones towards the back of the mat. Okay, and then finally, if you wanted to, you can take hold of the outsides of the feet or the big toes. Looking towards the big toes, keep those feet flexed to help feel the stretch deepen along the backs of the legs begin to activate the quadriceps so begin to imagine that you're pressing the backs of the knees into the mat maybe even your heels lift off the earth a tiny little bit now we're focusing on the stretch in the backs of the legs now we do get a little bit of a stretch in the lower back but you don't want to be feeling any compression you want to be feeling it in the backs of the legs if you find the stretch is reaching towards the middle or upper back, you're probably in too far. So just come up, make sure the shoulders can draw away from the ears and the chest can lead the movement. Looking towards the toes. With each breath in, the crown of the head draws away from the tailbone. And with each exhale, maybe you surrender a little bit deeper. Try to lengthen as opposed to folding. Visualize your torso becoming parallel with the tops of the legs. Inhale, head up, look forward, lengthen the arms. Exhale here. Inhale, come all the way back up to center. Okay, so we're going to move into a, uh, a slight hip opener. So we have a couple of options. We have We've got uh, Janu Shasana A, which is the external rotation of the hip joint, or we've also got the option for Ardha Bada Padma Pashimottanasana, half bound lotus seated forward fold, which is a very deep external rotation of the hip joint. So I'll, I'll, I'll cue you through Janu A first. So as we inhale, draw the right knee in towards the chest. It's important here that we close the knee joint as we bring the knee in towards the chest, so nice and tight. And then as we exhale, we lower the knee over to the side. So your knee may be here, that's fine. You just don't want to be feeling any pain in the knee. So if it's up here, make sure you use as many props as you need to keep it supported. Okay, so taking the pressure out of the knee, you don't want it to kind of just be hanging out here. Maybe it's a little bit lower or maybe it's hovering just off the floor and that's fine too. And then from here, we again have the option to fold forward or you can stay upright. Maybe take a hold of the strap around the foot lifting the chest forward just like we did for the forward fold or maybe you can take a hold of the foot or the big toe again inhaling to lengthen and exhaling to fold forward now if you are working with external rotation of the hip joint and you're relatively mobile no injuries to the knee no injuries to the ankle then moving into um, the half bound lotus seated forward fold as we inhale bring the knee in as we exhale, external rotation at the hip joint. So keep that shin glued to the knee, then bring the right foot to the left hip crease, okay? So see here, what we don't wanna be doing is this, yanking that shin up here, because what's gonna happen is you're gonna do damage to the knee. So close the knee joint, external rotation as one unit, foot towards the hip crease. Okay, from here you have got the option to just fold forward or if you're working with the shoulder mobility as well, internal rotation of the right shoulder as we reach back behind either for the elbow, holding onto the left elbow, or the toes. Okay, very advanced posture here. And then as we exhale, we fold. Squeezing the inner thighs together so the knee draws more towards the midline. You're aiming to feel a stretch in the right hip so probably around in the right glute. If you're feeling pain in the knee or the ankle, it's an indication that the hip is not yet open, off, open enough to try that. So just work with Janu A for now. Okay, wherever we are, inhale, head up, look forward. Exhale fully. 
Inhale, come all the way back to center wherever we are, bring the knee to the midline. And exhale to release and shake out the legs. Quite a deep stretch. Inhale, bring the left knee in. Exhale for Janu A, sole of the foot towards the inner thigh. Support the knee as needed. Inhale to take hold of the foot or the strap or stay upright. And exhale to fold. Okay, again for the half lotus variation, inhale. Bring that heel in towards the sit bone, nice and high in the knee. Isolate the movement from the hip joint, so you don't want the knee to be moving at all. External rotation as we bring the ankle towards the hip crease. And again, inhale, lengthen. And exhale to fold. Squeezing the inner thighs together so you bring that left knee more towards the midline. Okay, support with blocks and props as necessary. Inhale, head up. Exhale, fully. Inhale, come all the way back to center, bring the knee to the center line. And exhale to release, okay. So we're gonna come into a variation on a seated pigeon pose, Kapotasana. Um, we've got the very deep expression of uh, Dwipada Kapotasana, two-legged king pigeon, or a double pigeon, or sometimes called um, log, uh, fire log pose. But we're just gonna offer up lots of modifications. So for the first variation, what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring your right ankle and cross it over the left thigh. Okay, so that your leg is kind of at 45 degrees. You don't want to be feeling any pain in the knee here. If it feels unbalanced or uncomfortable, again, support it with the block, and this will be enough for you, trying to isolate the stretch into the inner thigh. If you're not feeling it, but you're not feeling any pain, then what you can do is bend the left knee. So you can interlace the fingers around the shin, drawing that knee in, or you can press into the hands. Uh, maybe your foot's not this far in, maybe it's just to here, that's fine too. We're just working in this direction, uh, but maybe it's all the way closed. And if so, then you can focus on lifting the chest, drawing those shoulders away from the ears, looking forward. Okay. So we'll hold here for a couple more moments. And then we'll come into it on the other side. So you should be feeling a stretch in the right hip. If you're feeling pain in the right knee or the right ankle, then just make sure you come into the slightly less intense variation. And just take a little bit of movement. See, see if you can find a position where you feel that stretch nice and deep. You can still breathe through it. You don't want to be sort of holding your breath or gritting your teeth to try and get the stretch, but you do want to be feeling it in the right glute. You may also be feeling it in the right inner thigh as well. There's a little bit of a stretch going on there. You can flex your toes back towards your knees to help protect the ankle and to help protect the knee. One more full breath. And then to start with, release the left leg bring the right knee in towards center and then release. Okay, and we'll come to that on the other side. So again, first option, bringing the left ankle to the top of the right thigh. So just above the knee, not on the kneecap itself, just above. And again, if this is uncomfortable in the knee, just support with blocks. Maybe it's up here working with this, that's fine too. If you're not feeling the stretch, begin to draw that right foot in. So again, maybe just working with this, the foot's in slightly, lifting the chest, hands behind the hips, or if you're slightly more open, you can walk that heel in towards the hip. Take a hold of the shin, but wherever we are, we want to be focusing on lifting the chest, and you'll feel the change here. So if you're rounding through the upper back, you may not feel that much of a stretch, you may feel struggling, feel like you're struggling to stay balanced. Instead, lift the chest, keep the shoulders away from the ears, look forward, try to elongate the spine as much as possible. Imagine the crown of the head is lifting up towards the ceiling, grounding down through your sit bones. Isolating the stretch into the left hip, toes flexed back towards the knee to help protect the knee and the ankle. Steady your breath. Release any tension you may feel in your jaw or your forehead.
And then we're going to release the right leg, bring the left knee to centre and release. Shake out the legs. This can be quite an intense posture. And now from here, we're going to move into Dwipada Kaputasana or fire log or two-legged pigeon. So I'm just going to face you. <clears throat> we'll start with the left foot on the bottom. So just for now, focus on drawing your left shin in line with the short edge of the mat. So it's parallel, okay? You want your sit bones to be parallel. So what there's a tendency to do is to kind of hike that right hip up or forward. Instead, keep them nice and grounded, keep the sit bones nice and grounded. Left toes flexed. Okay, from here, some of us may want a block underneath the left hip, and that's fine, we can work with this. Next step is to bring the right foot on top of the left knee. Okay, so we don't want the foot to be in the knee crease, we don't want to be sickling the foot like this, we want the ankle to be um, on top of the knee, toes flexed. And then from here, you can bring another block underneath the right thigh. And this may feel like a really lovely deep stretch in either just your right hip or both hips, depending on how open we are. If you wanted to take it a little bit deeper, you can release the block, continue to keep your sit bones nice and grounded, stay nice and tall, or to take it even deeper, we can begin to fold forward. Make sure your toes are flexed back towards the knee to help keep them nice and safe. Okay, so maybe it feels nice to stretch the arms out in front. Or again, focus on trying to find that deep stretch. So for some people, leaning over towards the right foot will feel like a deep stretch. And for others, maybe leaning over towards the left foot will feel like a deep stretch. You want to be working to a point where you feel the stretch, especially in the right hip, but ultimately um, you want both hips to be opening up. We will do this on the other side as well. Taking a couple more breaths, notice if your breath is becoming strained or if you're um, bringing tension into the jaw, forehead. And then as we inhale, we come back up through center, release the legs. Okay, if you want, you can stretch them out in between. And then we'll come to it on the other side. So bring the right shin towards parallel with the short edge of the mat. Place a block under the knee if it feels more comfortable. And then place the left foot on top of the right knee. Toes flex back towards, placing a block underneath your left knee. Make sure your pelvis is nice and level. Make sure that left hip's not hiking up or pressing forward. And then you can stay here with the hands on the outside of the hips. Again, lifting the chest. Focus on keeping the crown of the head away from the tailbone. You'll feel the stretch deepen. Or to take it slightly deeper, and if you feel comfortable, you can release the blocks and maybe begin to fold forward. So with this posture, it can be tough. Um, if your leg is more like this or like this, you know, this is great. It's, as long as you're feeling the stretch and you're not feeling any strain or pain in the knee, that's fine. You can modify as needed, place as many blocks, cushions, towels. You can even support it with your arms. If you find that you're in a more awkward position, you can hold it here. Um, or come into the position we just did. That's going to be working the same um, stretch in the same muscles. Ultimately, we're going for the deep six lateral external rotators and the glutes. These areas can get very tight, especially when we don't uh, move so much. We do a lot of sitting. Inhale, we come back up through center, release the legs and shake them out if you need to, extend them out if you need to. We're going to come into a chest expansion now. So we're going to come into uh, Anahatasana, melting heart pose or puppy pose. This is a really lovely one for getting the tightness that we often get in the chest. So coming onto our hands and knees, bring the knees back slightly. So the hips stay stacked over the knees, but you can bring your hands forward. Bring the arms out to the front corners of the mat. So from here, you can release your forehead down to a block. If you don't need the block, then you can release your forehead down towards the earth. Maybe as we go a little bit deeper, you can release your chin towards the earth, chest down. Ultimately, you want to be feeling a stretch in through the chest, the collarbone, the backs of the arms. Continue to breathe deep, continue to keep those hips stacked over the knees. This is deep stretching we're doing. This is quite intense stuff okay but we're just making sure that as it gets cooler as the body begins to cool 
preparing for winter, we want to keep that mobility, that nice range of motion that we keep uh, when the body is nice and warmed up. You may find this if you've ever gone to a hot yoga class or abroad to practice. You find that you've got this mobility, a little bit more stretch when you're in a warmer climate. So we want to try our, as best we can to keep that mobility through the cooler months. As we inhale, look forward, begin to slowly press the hands forward. Sit back on the heels and we're going to come into Utsu Ustrasana, camel pose. This is quite an intense posture, it's a back bend. Um, we're going to take it slowly one, one side at a time, um, but we're going to be bringing a little bit of mobility into it. So if you know you've got lower back issues, um, just take it really, really gently. Make sure you move with support or come into a different back bend that you know is more comfortable to you. Maybe cobra position uh, with the support of the arms and using the strength of the arms a little bit to help you into it. Otherwise, we'll go straight into Ustrasana. So coming into a high... Uh, a high kneeling position. Um, bring your knees to hips distance apart. Bring your hands to your lower back. So you can either have your fingers facing down or if that feels uncomfortable on the wrist, bring the fingers to the outside of the hips, um, thumbs more towards the back of the spine, elbows back behind you. So as we inhale, we lift the chest, lift the crown of the head, begin to look up. Imagine that the sternum is on a piece of string. Elbows draw back behind you nice and open through the collarbone. Now from here, we want to begin to recline back. What we don't want is the hips to come back. We want to keep the hips stacked over the knees. And then if you can, so you can stay here, or if you can, bring your right hand to your right heel. If you need to, you can tuck the toes under to get a little bit more of an accessible grip. Otherwise, bring the right hand back and bring the left hand back behind you. Okay, you can extend it behind you, look towards the hand, feeling that open through the front side of the body, opening up through the shoulder, opening up through the collarbone. And then as we inhale, we can either come back to center or we can switch the hands, bring the left hand back to the heel and bring the right hand back. Okay, opening through the chest, continue to keep those hips stacked over the heels, try to avoid over squeezing the glutes. Keep them in a nice neutral position. And then as we inhale, bring both hands back to the lower back. Come all the way back up slowly as you need to. Sit back on the heels. Just shake side to side. Try to avoid coming into uh, you know, a child's pose or an extreme rounding position first. Just take a little bit of time to allow the spine to neutralize itself. Beautiful, so we've opened through the heart, we've opened through the hips and the hamstrings. Hopefully feeling a little bit more open in the body. These areas build up a lot of tension. Hopefully you're feeling a nice change. Okay, one last opening through the backs of the arms now, the triceps. This is another area that can get a little bit tight. So similar to what we just did, we, um, sorry, before, just when we come into puppy, we're gonna now do that with the, um, tricep extension. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back into our puppy position. Okay. And this time we're going to bring our elbows either towards the block or if they comfortably reach the floor, you can bring them to the floor. And then what you can do is bend the elbows. So the thumbs reach the back of the neck fingers together, facing up towards the ceiling. So if you have the block, this deepens the stretch. Okay, allowing yourself to melt through the arms. You may need two blocks here. <laughs> Feeling the stretch along the backs of the arms, through the chest still, allowing the belly to drop down towards the earth, but continue to draw the low belly in, Uddiyana Bandha, to help protect the lower back. And then when you're ready, release the arms slowly. Be careful here, be gentle with yourself and walk the hands back to center. Okay. Coming to lay down on our back, we're now gonna take the supported versions of um, bridge and Matsyasana fish pose. So I love these postures. I think they're really wonderful ways of opening it up. Trying to release the body without activating too much. So for bridge, you're gonna want um, a block as we come down behind you and you're gonna want perhaps two blocks when we come into fish pose. So knees bent, you can watch me first if you're not sure where you're going. Don't move your head from side to side in this posture. Come to lay down on your back. 
bring your heels in towards your sit bones. Feet, knees and hips are all aligned, so make sure the feet aren't really wide. You want the toes in slightly so the flat edges of the feet are parallel with the flat edges of the mat. As we inhale, we lift those hips up, place the block on any setting on the sacrum, which is the flat part of the spine, so it's just above the bottom, but it's not on the curvature of the spine itself. Okay, so just, just on top of the pelvis. And then if you feel comfortable, you can release your hands alongside the body. Maybe adjust the block onto a more comfortable setting. But make sure the knees stay hips distance apart. Continue to press down through the shoulders and the back of the head for support. Continue to draw the chest away from the chin as we look up towards the sky. And you may feel here as you open up through the front body that the breath gets a little bit more restrictive. Continuing to draw the low belly in, breathing into the rib cage. Try to breathe deep anyway. This is gonna stretch out all those muscles that surround the rib cage and allow us to breathe a little bit deeper in our everyday life. Get a more efficient, more oxygenated breath. That's why oftentimes in deep, expansive back bends, we can feel um, anxious. We can get that shortness of breath, um, that feeling of we want to get out. That's because we're stretching all those muscles that surround our rib cage, and it's our body's natural reaction to try and struggle as we're trying to breathe deep. So it can sometimes activate that panic reaction. It's important to try and breathe deeply through it. Allow your body to know it's safe, and you're just bettering your um, lung capacity ultimately. Inhale, so we're pressing through the heels, lift the hips slightly, just enough to release the block, and then lower down. And then we're going to come into a fish pose, supported fish pose. Now, um, you may want to sit up here just as we organize the blocks. You can take a little bit of fiddling about. So, the position I like is to have one block uh, lengthways, so just along the length of the spine, either on the sort of the higher setting or the lower setting, depending on what feels better for you. And then the second block, now this is up to you, what you find more comfortable on your neck. You can either have it on a lower setting, so you're opening up through the throat. You can have it on a higher setting to support the head, or you can have it on the same setting, so you've got like a neutral position for the neck. So I'm gonna have mine on the lower setting to start with, and I'm gonna see how we get on. So extending the legs out long, prop back down onto your elbows so you can adjust the block. And then you want to release the head. Okay, I wanted it on the middle setting in the end. Release the head onto the other block. So you should be feeling nice and open through the chest, allowing the shoulders to draw down towards the earth as we open up through the heart. Feel that openness along the front side of the body. Maybe the openness in the throat as well, if you've reclined your head back behind you. If you don't have the blocks, you can do this without by propping up onto your elbows and really releasing back. Uh, it's just a slightly more active position. And I like this one with blocks. I find it so comfortable. A great way of releasing, stretching through the front side of the body. Take one more deep breath. And as we inhale, again, this takes <laughs> a little bit of um, getting used to. Just prop yourself up onto your elbows. Make sure you come out as slowly as you need to. Prop yourself up, press up to the hands, release the blocks. And we're gonna come down to lay on our backs. Draw the knees in towards the chest. Give yourself a little bit of a hug, roll around Apanasana. Take any last movements your body needs. Listen to your body, listen to what feels good. Hopefully still feeling nice and warm and cozy. If not, crank up the heating or grab yourself a hoodie or a blanket. Preparing yourself for your Shavasana. So releasing the legs out long, bring your feet out to the front corners of the mat, release your arms alongside the body with the palms facing up. If you have your blocks and props, feel free to use them as support, either underneath the knees or underneath the back of the head. Allow the body to move into a state of rest as the fingertips begin to curl, palms of the hands begin to soften, forearms begin to ground into the mat, and 
feel heavy as the shoulders draw down towards the earth. Toes release as the feet begin to roll out to the sides. Calves nice and heavy as the thighs relax. The hips begin to roll out to the side. Release your low belly. The backs of the ribs, the shoulder blades. Release all those muscles around the throat, the collarbone, the jaw, the tongue, the cheeks, through to your temples and eyebrows. Release all of those tiny muscles around the eyelids and the eyeballs. And then release the space in the very center of your forehead where your third eye rests. All the way through to the crown. Allow the mind to quiet, resting on either your breath or the intention you set yourself at the beginning of your practice. And allow yourself to rest here in complete stability of the body, the breath, and the mind for as long as you have the time for today. Thank you so much for practicing with me today as you go forward. I wish you peace in your thoughts, peace in your words, and peace in your heart. Namaste.